So let's put all of this to use. Before we look at an application problem, we need to get a few things under our belts. So let's start with this part right here. The path of an object propelled at an inclination of theta to the horizontal. So this is going to be our angle, some angle theta to the horizontal with initial speed v naught or v sub zero at a height h above the horizontal. Most of the time that would be above the ground, but we have to define it as above the horizontal is given by this pair of parametric equations. Okay, so these are our formulas when we're dealing with an object that is propelled at a specific angle. Okay, G is going to be the effect of gravity. And depending on what you're dealing with, whether it's feet or meters, you're going to use G is 32 or G is 9.8. So all of that is very important information for solving these types of uh, problems. We do have our nice little how-to right here, but we're hopefully going to just work through that in this first example. I know this is really small writing, I hope you can read it. It says, it is the bottom of the ninth inning with two outs and two men on base. The home team is losing by two runs. The batter swings and hits the baseball at 140 feet per second and at an angle of approximately 45 degrees to the horizontal. How far will the ball travel? Will it clear the fence for a game-winning home run? The outcome may depend partly on other factors, for example the wind, but mathematicians can model the path of a projectile and predict approximately how far it will travel using parametric equations. And we've already discussed all of this right here. So let's go to the next page and see if we can actually figure this out. Does the batter on the previous page hit the game winning home run? Assume the ball is hit, and we said that originally in that uh, previous page. The ball is hit with an initial velocity of 140 feet per second. So we know that our V naught, our initial velocity is 140 feet per second. We're at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. So theta is 45 degrees and making contact three feet above the ground. So the initial height is going to be three feet. They gave us some more information, which we don't need yet, but let's go ahead and read it. Assume the outfield wall is 10 feet high and 400 feet from home plate. Okay, so how do we figure all of this stuff out? Well, first of all, which gravity are we going to be using? We're given feet, and when we're given feet, we're going to use 32 feet per second squared. So let's go ahead and write that down as well. Gravity, or the effects of gravity, would be 32 feet per second squared. The first part, part says, find the parametric equations to model the path of the baseball. So we have our formulas on the previous page. Our formulas are x is equal to v naught cosine theta t and y is equal to negative one half gt squared plus v naught sine theta t plus h. So those are our two formulas that form the parametric equations. So filling in for x, we have x is equal to v naught cosine of 45 degrees t. 
y is negative one half times g times t squared plus 140 sine of 45 degrees t plus h. So we have our x equation. We just need to simplify this one a little bit. So y is equal to negative 1 half times 32 would be negative 16t squared plus all the rest of this stuff. So this is going to be the y part of our parametric equations. And that's all you have to do for part A. Part B says, where is the ball after two seconds? Where is the ball after two seconds? Well, if we plug two into the X formula, type all of that into our calculator, make sure your calculator is in degrees this time. You find out that B is, excuse me, you find out that X is approximately 198 feet. Now remember, X is going to be the horizontal, right? So it's 198 feet from the original location. Well, didn't the ball start from where the bat hit it? Okay, so it's 198 feet from the batter. You can even say from the batter's box. Okay, but we can also find out how high it is in the air because that would be our y function. So y of 2 would be negative 16 times 2 squared plus 140 sine of 45 degrees times 2 plus 3. Type all of this into your calculator. You get approximately 137 feet. Now y, remember the y-axis is vertical, so this is the vertical height. It's 137 feet above the ground. In this case, our horizontal is the ground. So that's where the ball is after two seconds. Part C says, how long is the ball in the air? Remember, the ball is going to be doing this shape, right? Something like that. So how long is this ball in the air? Well, when it hits the ground, isn't that where the height is zero? Right here, height is zero. Do you agree with that? So that's going to be where the vertical is equal to zero. So for part C, you just let y equal zero. Now this equation looks kind of daunting, but if you'll notice, it's a quadratic. This is squared, this is a singular variable, and this doesn't have a variable. So this makes a quadratic equation, which means we can use the quadratic formula. So t is equal to negative b, all of this is b. So we have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So as long as you are super careful putting all of this into your calculator, you have the, this plus all this divided by the denominator, and you have this minus all this divided by the denominator. So whenever you do those two things, you end up with negative 0.03, and you also end up with 6.2. The reason you have a negative is because this ball actually left the bat 
three feet above the ground. So if it had started back in time, the other zero would be here. Make sense? So this is why we have a negative value because it's kind of back in time. So we don't really need this one. That means the ball is actually in the air until the height is zero, right? Well, the height is zero again after 6.2 seconds. That's how long it is in the air. All right, so what does D say? Is it a home run? Well, that's a loaded question, right? Is it a home run? Well, let's see. We were also given this information. The outfield wall is 10 feet high. So if we use this little picture, hopefully the hopefully it was a home run. So we'll say that the outfield wall is 10 feet high. And we also know that that wall is 400 feet from home plate. So the guy hits the ball from here and this is 400 feet. So we want to know how tall is this ball or how high in the air it is once it reaches 400 feet from the batter. Well wouldn't this be the horizontal distance? And isn't that our x portion of the parametric equations? So we want to know how high is this ball when x is 400 feet. That's what we're looking for right there. Find y when x is 400 feet. So 400 is equal to 140 cosine 45 t. So what we want to do is solve for t, which means we have t is equal to 400 divided by all of this. You get approximately 4.04 seconds. It takes 4.04 seconds for the ball to travel 400 feet. Now, in my calculator, I just saved this. I'll show you. So we don't get confused. So we have 400 divided by 140. Oop, I forgot to change the degrees. Cosine 45. I have this number. I'm just going to store it in X. Okay? That way, I don't have to think about this anymore. I stored this in X in my calculator. So how do we find Y then? Well, we go back up to our formula and we substitute our new T into this formula. Well, remember, I just now saved that in X in my calculator. So really, all I have to do is type this in using an X instead of a T. So I have I get 141.8 y is equal to 141.8 feet now what does that mean Remember that this is the vertical distance or the distance in the air from the ground, right? So that's how tall this ball is once it reaches the wall. The wall is only 10 feet high. So if the ball is 141 feet in the air, it definitely cleared the wall, which means it soared right over and made it a home run.
that means they won the game. 